going to try. Perhaps that sound will even come back. The sound that makes me smile and giggle when I puff on tracks that giggle. Rattle, rattle, shake, shake, wobble the lemonade. Pop, 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 swing the cork. Right into a field of pink. The pink was surprised as corks dropped and flopped into the mud around us. <laughs> what a shock noise! Okay, um, here's what we're going to do. This is going out to the PCGS Envisioning Sustainability class. And on Wednesday in class, I said uh, it would be great if you could all spend part of the weekend making your first video in Blender. And at that time, I was a bit confused about how to get the models, the mesh models, into the video editing. Um, as well as images and video clips and I figured that out last night so I want to share that with you so let me go into Blender here I'm using Blender 3.0 so it, this may be much different if you have an earlier version so I recommend since Blender is free and open source to upgrade to Blender 3.0 when you do that you'll see when you start out with the Blender splash screen that comes up that there is a video editing tab I'm not going to use that right now. I'm going to just click behind it and default to the cube, which is the layout. There's these tabs, layout and modeling um, are up there. And you can get to video editing over here on the plus button, and you'll see that there is a video editing tab. And there's rendering and editing. And so you can get to that, and then it jumps into what looks like a traditional uh, video editor with a timeline and a screen and a bunch of assets. So the first thing that we're going to do in there, and, and you would have gotten there if you had gone through, I'll do it, I'll, I'll, uh, no, I'm going to keep this up. Um, if you did a new file, general, let's save that. Blender tends to start out like this, but if you have the splash screen, you can just click on video editing and it'll open it up like that. Either way you get at it is fine. So let me do this again, let me go to new, general, that's how it starts out with the splash screen in front of this but this may happen to you and you may not be reading all this you can open your recent files from here but just click here and then go up to the plus button here and go to video editing and now you're in the video editor now the first thing I recommend you do is rename it and where it says scene up here call it video editor for my project, for example, if that's what you're doing. All right, that gives this scene a name because Blender's made up of scenes, like scenes in a movie. And to do the first editing, you can just work within this single scene that you have, but in order to do mesh modeling and then putting them in, you need to create a new scene. We'll get to that in a second. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down here to add, and I'm gonna add a movie and my movie is going to be found in my videos folder and let me grab the animation that I did from a previous blender render which is this floating IBC solar cities biogas digester right and there it is and you can see it's a bit longer than the render space so this little area here in gray just shows how much would render if you were hitting play it would render this part of it and when it gets to here it would stop rendering even though it's going to keep playing because the clip is longer than the render window ah it's up it's looped back that's just as well see down here the number of frames and then it says the end is at 250. if i grab this end 250 and drag it out now my end point for the rendering when i actually produce the video is going to go all the way to the end of my clip and then it's going to loop back and so you can slide this back. As you can see, you can slide it back to decide how much of a clip you want to render. You can make it longer as well. So I'm just going to put it right here at about 12 seconds. And 12 seconds is 359 frames. I have it so that it's actually showing seconds here. And there are ways of changing that so that you can see frames. When you go and stretch it out, then it tends to um, give you frames. Like it says here, it's 2 seconds and 20 frames, 2 seconds and 28 frames, 3 seconds and 6 frames. 30 frames is a second. 
in Blender. That's what we usually set it toward. All right. So now I've got this little movie in here. And of course, if I wanted to add pictures to my video, then I'd want to increase the space for editing. Let me scroll wheel down there and, and pull this out. And I can play around with these clips. Maybe I want to start with an image and I go to add image and then find some pictures that I want to put in. Let me use the, um, I want to see what I'm looking at. So I'm going to click up here and see if I can yeah, get thumbnails there. So maybe I want this turtle that I'm building and I can put that in and it's got nothing to do with biogas. I'm just showing you a little video. That image is a static image, which I can lengthen. Now it's 68, now it's 82 frames, now it's 103 frames. And as I mentioned, 30 frames is a second. So that's the second. There we get up to 60 frames. You can see it down here. That's two seconds. So you decide how long you want it up there by stretching and squashing. So if I go to three times 30, which is 90 frames, then I have three seconds. There we go. That's a three second clip. And then I might want to then have my video come in. So we hit and play it. And now we're in the video. There's a little gap there, as you can see. So I scroll wheel in and I want to eliminate the gap. And now there's no gap. Right, it just is a cut. Now Blender does let you do transitions and there's many tracks. So if you want to bring this up or down and have it dissolve in, then you should be able to right click and then add transition and do a cross dissolve. And now you can see it does this cross dissolve. And you can make that cross dissolve longer by moving this. So short dissolve, cross dissolve. That gives you a longer cross dissolve. Okay, that looks kind of cool. All right. But what if I want to put in something? Let me go down here to the end. What if I want to put in something floating over this? Maybe an arrow or something that's pointing to the thing I want to write, or maybe text. So this is where Blender becomes really cool because you can integrate 3D models that you make into your video. But to do that, you need to set up another scene because you're going to be going add scene. And right now, when I go to add scene, it says no items available. You can also add a movie clip. There's no items available. Or add a mask. You can add a movie, which we did. You can add a sound. You can add an image sequence. You can add text. So if I'm going to do text, there's text right there. The text appears on the screen. That's fairly straightforward. You would want to come up here to text. You want to say um, Solar Cities Floating IBC Tank Biodigester. And then that should appear there when you put that same text in the effect strip text. So let me just see if I can grab that. There we go. Copy and paste. And then hit enter. And there it is. But you can't, unfortunately, in Blender, just click on it and move it. So the moving's a little awkward. You have to go down here and change the location with these sliders. And I don't like that about Blender. It would be nice if there was a, a way that you could just on screen grab it. Maybe they'll put that in as a new feature, but I, I haven't found it if it does yet exist. So I have to go around and adjust down here. But I can change the color. Okay. And you can change the size. And you can put on a shadow and determine how much of the shadow there can be a box around it. And then there's a box margin, as you can see, that sometimes helps to read it a bit. And you can animate the shadow coming in and out. The shadow's not, not really showing up much. I can add the color. Maybe you'll see it better if I use a purple shadow. Is that letting me see? I don't see the shadow. Okay, that's odd. Oh, it's supposed to have a shadow. There's the box margin is working fine. For some reason, the shadow is not. That's an animation. Shadow's not showing up. Oh well. So 
there's a capability and we'll need to figure out why the shadow is not showing up. But you can, of course, then um, decide to pick both of these and do a transition for that so that there is a cross and then it'll float in, but that cross is done as a replace. And that's why you're it's looking awkward. So if you do alpha over, then it should, I think I need to refresh my assets. So let's go to view and go to refresh all. No, it's not, uh, it's not doing it because it should be that this is Maybe I didn't do the alpha over here. Strip, and then put in, put in, I did alpha over, so that's weird. Okay, so that transition, I have to work that out at some point because I'm not getting a good fade in doing that. But you can do an animation for the fade, and that'll work just as well. That's the nice thing about objects that you put in. So if I take the opacity, which is for here, strip size, color, shadow box, box margin, opacity, and I turn on animation here to animate the property, and I start out at zero, so now it's disappeared, and then as I come over here, I bring it up to, well, it did work. So I need to get back to the beginning of this. Tell it that I want this to be zero and make a keyframe. And then come to here and make it one and make a keyframe. Now it should, there it goes. So it's sort of, it's coming in, changing the opacity. And then I would have to make a keyframe here at one. And then down at the end, I want to make its keyframe zero. And then it should fade in and fade out. Where's my fade out? That's funny. Let's do this again. Zero and then make a keyframe. Let's see if that works. Yeah, there we go. All right, so it floats in, comes in, and then fades out. So you're animating that property. Um, another thing, uh, as I said, you can also put in objects this way, but to do the objects, there's nothing available. Like we were able to add text, but we can't add a scene yet because there's no scene available. So you come up here to your scene of the video editing, click on this new scene button, make a new scene, and you're in the video editor. So you need to go over to the layout and you'll see a scene for the layout. All right. It has nothing in it. So here, add what you want to put in. So if I want to put in this Yes, there is text there. We're not going to use this text for now. Let's say I want to put in a mesh and I want it to be a UV sphere, so a little ball. And I want that ball to sort of bounce around in there. Then what I can do is taking this ball, I can bring the timeline up and I can, oh, I must have, besides the ball, I must have a camera. So I need to add a camera camera's there. I need to move the camera, hitting G. Let's see what the camera sees by hitting zero. There it is. Maybe I want to back the camera up a little bit. So select the camera and back it up. Look at the top view to back it up further. All right. Hit zero to see what the camera sees. All right. So that's what the camera sees. I also probably need a light. It's always lights, camera, action. The ball is action. So I'm going to add a light. I get a point light and move that light with G. And all right. So I have a light in here. There's the camera. There's the action. There's the ball. So now that I have that, I hit zero to get what the camera sees. Or you can go view and do a line view to active, or, or you can do cameras and active camera. So view active camera. Cameras there. All right. So you take then the uh, the object. Click on the object that you want to animate. Let's move it over here. 
and we'll set a keyframe by putting our cursor in the window hitting I for location and I like to use location rotation and scale so I can affect all three of those parameters and now I want to set the keyframe is there so now I'm going to move to three seconds which is 90 frames in mesh modeling you always see the frame number rather than the seconds in the video editor you see seconds so now I'm going to take that and I'm going to move hitting G this over to the other side and I'm going to hit a keyframe I location rotation scale so now I have a three second animation where the ball moves across but I can also come to the middle of it which would be about 45 frames and here lift the ball up and now hit I location rotation scale and now I get an arc as the ball moves another cool thing that I can do on that keyframe is I can hit S for scale and scale it down and hit I for location rotation scale and because I am affecting the scale the ball is shrinking and then getting larger and that makes it look like it's traveling in X space going back it's really not it's just getting smaller so it's an optical illusion because if you look at this from the top I'll hit the 7 key you can see that it has not changed although now it looks like it's going down in Z because I made it small that's kind of cool and that's what how in the Nexus you get fooled if you can only look at two parameters so you can see here it's just shrinking is all it's doing but it does create an optical illusion right. anyway the camera sees it like this and that's pretty cool so how would I then get this in to my movie so I've got this scene now that's 90 frames long once again, you should then make this scene 90. So that, as you see, it's, it's only going to render that much. Otherwise, the scene is far too long. And as I showed you with the video editor, you can set the number of frames that you're going to render. And I'm just making it 90. All right. So that's that scene. I'm going to give that scene a name. And I give that scene the name ball or ball model, whatever you want. And now I have these two, these two scenes ball model has a camera that we put in it's got a point light that we put in and it's got a sphere the sphere has animation on it with keyframes the green means that it's within uh, the keyframe but yellow means that's the keyframe that's the keyframe see how that turned yellow over here that's the keyframe the first one All right so the ball's moving like that and <clears throat> what I'll do now is go back to my video editor scene my video editor scene what it's got a cube in it well that's because we created our video scene out of the default where there had originally been a cube and so there's a cube sitting there but it's not going to show up so you don't have to worry about it you can leave it there but you should know that when you start blender the first default scene always has a light it has a camera and it has an object and then you can see the animation here and that doesn't do anything because this animation here was for our um, for our uh, text transparencies and, and other things so I'm gonna go to video editing and now I'm back in my video editing timeline and you see that where, where the animations are it's that cross and that here so we have these clips we have the tortoise image we have a another movie coming in underneath with a dissolve across dissolve then as we go there's layered on top a um, text box I want to layer on top the ball and it's going to go over the entire three seconds so here I just go to add scene and now my ball model shows up as a scene the first scene that you create doesn't show up as something you can add and that's why I always start with video editor as my first scene any other scene you make will show up as a discrete scene. So I hit ball. Now the ball model is there. And it is three, oops, it's three seconds, just like that original frame. And there it is. But it's not, it's not showing up. It's just showing up as a, as a cut and blocking the other thing because it's opaque. So how do you make it so that the ball jumps over the biodigester. This is the camera up here, by the way. This uh, this blue 
uh, time marker with a blue line going down. Think of that as the camera with the camera's lens looking down through these layers. So since it encountered the ball first, it blocks out what's behind it down here. Now, you could change that and you could um, move everything here up and then you can move the ball underneath and now you'll see it doesn't show up because it's behind. You'd have to bring it up for it to show up because this is the camera looking down like Walt Disney's multiplane camera looking down through these stacks through these layers. So if this is behind the animation of the floating IBC it disappears. If it's in front of course it occludes what's underneath it. And we don't want to occlude it. We want to make this background transparent. And here's where Blender really shines. Because if I pick this ball model now and I go to uh, what it shows in the properties on the right, every time you click on an asset or a clip in the timeline, on the right here, you get information about it. And here, the scene says scene. Scene is called ball model. Has a button called transparent. And if you click on that, then it is going to render the background transparent. And the only reason it didn't is because we haven't yet refreshed the asset. So I need to go back to view, always do this, and go refresh all. Now you see that it turned transparent with those little squares back there. But of course you're not seeing the, um, the video clip show through even though it's turned transparent because you haven't changed the blend. Obviously, if I make my opacity zero, then you see that, yeah, there is something back there. But you need to change this from blend cross to alpha over. Now, the alpha channel is the channel that says uh, some things are transparent, some things are not. The ball here is not transparent. The background is. So when you say alpha over, the ball will appear. But whatever is underneath it, down on this track, will show up underneath the alpha is over what's underneath there's something called alpha under um, not helpful here let me see if I bring this under does that help I don't think it will I think alpha under is kind of I've never really figured out how to use alpha under I'll try a refresh just to see and no you don't see anything so alpha under doesn't do you any good at all let me refresh so you want to make sure you're using alpha over and then the ball appears and now the animation plays all right now to get color into this you have modifiers here you can go to the modifiers add a strip modifier and put in color balance if you want and then pick a color so now my ball is red and my ball travels through so my video so far when i hit spacebar to play is this turtle and then it goes through a transition and the ball appears and whizzes around and then I get my text and that's like a simple movie <coughs> of course I can move that ball wherever I want to right maybe I want it to come after that would be fine I usually use discrete tracks for these things but you can put them on the same track one to clip and then another that's okay. All right. Now, you can't get in and manipulate this. So if you're going to do this and you want to have it be a precise animation, like say I want it to avoid hitting those metal bars, then I've got to do, I've got to go back into the ball scene. Again, you're being video editing, so be conscious of that. Go back over to layout. And then you would have to decide how you wanted to move your ball so that it, um, it didn't hit. And this is a little trickier because where's the reference image? It is possible to put a reference image back here. I have not yet done that. I think you can go to add and then image and then say reference and then pick your picture. Is the turtle in here? Let's see if the turtle's in here. There it is. So I could take that but it's not exactly matched up. So you'd have to then decide, all right, how do I make this image scale up? Oops, scale, 
scale up in Y, move it in Y, oops, not in X, oh, move it in Z, uh, and then scale the, so this is sort of a kludgy way to do it. And that's the turtle image, so that doesn't really help us. Oops, I wanted to do the other image, so oops on that. Let me get rid of this image. Uh, where did I put this image? This image is the tortoise. I'm going to hit X on that. Um, so I'm just going to eyeball it for now and just say, well, I want to move this keyframe here. I want to move it up and I want to scale it down a little bit more and move it up a little bit. And now redo the keyframe. And now it goes up and over a little bit more so that when I get back to the video editor and then go to video editing, you will see no difference there because I didn't refresh. So let me refresh. There, so you got tinier and it's moving up and yeah, it's not hitting the bar anymore. That's a real crude way to do it. The better way, of course, is to put a reference image and then you can have these things dance all over what's in the background. But this gives you a basic idea of how to add objects. And you can do as many as you like. So you can go make another scene. So go here to new scene. And I'm going to give this scene the name cube. And then I'm going to go back to my layout. I'm going to add a cube. I'm going to take my cube and I have not set a camera. So let's see if I take my ball model and I take my camera. Um, I don't think there's a way to copy the camera and bring it into another scene that's that intuitive. I haven't worked on that yet. Did I hit paste? Yeah, actually I actually did. I hit copy for the camera and paste for the camera. Okay, so that should match up. Now I'm going to add a, uh, a light. I can take the same light, actually. It looks like that, that actually works. So I'll go back to the ball model, and I'll find my light, which is there, and I'll copy it, Control-C, and I'll go back to my cube, and Control-V. Okay, the light came in. I can move that light if I want to and rotate the light to how it's casting on here. Yeah, that's a point light, so it doesn't much. I can change the type of light. From point light, I can go to lights over. Where's my light thing? My light thing. Does it let me change it? Uh, it says point light. Um, doesn't seem to be a way. Custom properties, relations. I don't know if you can just change the type of light. Maybe you can. Maybe I can go here. Yes, I can. Clicking here on the light, I can change it to be the sun. That's going to make it a little bit different there, as you can see. And then I can move the sun back in. All right, so I changed that. But let me go back to my camera view. And that's the side that's going to be illuminated. If you want to see how it's going to look, click up here to look at the rendering. So that's the way it's going to look. The sun is now changing the light properties. All right. So I have this uh, cube and I want to move the cube and I'd like to move the cube from down there. I must actually scale it a little bit, make it a little smaller with S. And in my animation, I'll make a keyframe of the, at the beginning of the animation. And then I want the cube to travel up over, let's say two seconds, so 60 frames in, hit G and Z and then move it up the Z axis. So it just sort of dances in there and then hit I and put in the keyframe and now it's going to animate between those over two seconds. All right. So having that in there, I can now go to my video editor. Make sure you click on video editing and go to add and that new scene cube shows up and there it is. And maybe I put that before. It's way too long because I didn't change it from 250. Oops. So let me go back to my cube and you'll see that while I only have, go back to layout, while I only have 
two seconds worth of animation, I rendered out 250 frames. So let's drag that back. So we just have that. And now go back to cube. Uh, ball model video editor, go to what video editor. And it still looks long because A, I haven't refreshed it. And B, because it was set earlier on. So let me delete that and re-add it. And there's cube, and that's much shorter. It's only 60 frames. So now I put that 60 frame animation in, and we have to go through the same procedure if we want this to, to work there. So we have to go into this strip. We need to go to strip over here, set transparent, and alpha over. Nothing shows up until you go and refresh. And now the cube comes up. And he goes, and you say, well, it's in the wrong place. Do I have to go back into, because it's blocking this, maybe I want it to float up here. Do I have to go back into my cube, which you could do, layout, and then take it, um, go back to your converse keyframe. And by the way, you can get there using this keyframe button. There, that's on the keyframe. That goes jump to keyframe, jump to keyframe. So I'm on the first keyframe. Should I just move this over and then re-add the keyframe? Now, of course, it's going to float across the screen. Go to the second keyframe. Jump to keyframe is easier here. Move it over there and then reset the keyframe by hitting I. Now it's going up that way. So now when I go back into my video editor, I'll click here to get back in the video editor. It's all messed up because I haven't refreshed. It doesn't know what to do with that information. So I go to view, refresh all. And now as you can see, it's not in the way. But the other way you could do it was to take this and go over into transform the properties and say, I want the position of this to be over here. And you'll drag the whole frame over and now you've got it going up and down. And of course, when you're not selected, you won't see those lines. So you have some control over these strips. Not complete control, but you have some. You can even do a rotation from here. But that rotates the whole frame, so that's kind of awkward. All right. So there is, there's these possibilities that you can do putting objects in. And again, here's something I don't know that maybe some of you can help me with. You might figure out when I go to my cube and to my layout here, my cube is uncolored, right? And I can change the color here by going to the color wheel and adding a new color and clicking on it and say, I want my cube to be green. It turns green here and that's lovely. But when I go to my video editor, and I look, my cube doesn't change color at all. So I don't know why that is. And that is why I tend to then go into modifiers here and add a strip modifier. I could do curves, it'd be interesting. RGB curve, I can make it green by going up in the green curve. There's a lot of different ways to change color in here. Change the blue curve a little bit. Bring the blue curve down, make it less green. Because so, you have a lot of control over it. Um, but that has nothing to do with the original cube. All right. But that's the basic idea of making <coughs> making a video. And of course, you can put in any video you want. So if you have recorded yourself, <coughs> I don't know if I have a recording of myself, but let me see. Add movie. And videos, and do I have anything of myself? But that's the basic idea of I do. I have me on green. That's a pretty, pretty darn long one, though. I think. So I don't know if I want to use that. Let's see if I have anything else. Movavi waste lecture, envisage lecture. Uh, a little drone footage. Okay, let's try that. So there's some drone footage. Yeah. So I took some drone footage and I can pop that in. And you'll notice that 
this brought in two strips and of course it's jumping back because I didn't make my render timeline long enough so let me go to end and drag it out for the length of the video here using the scroll wheel so it's a pretty long video that I've just added there so I'm going to drag that out so two strips came in one is video this blue one and one is audio now you want to prove to yourself that one is audio for one thing it does say on it does it say on it when you click on it and go to strip it should tell you yeah but this one is sound it says sound right there this one is compositing its video and it shows you up here a little like musical notation when you click on this and this one is uh, video and that's because I made a video with sound and it brings both the audio track and the video track in so what I'm gonna do is go to display waveform down here I showed that last week in class and then you can see the audio all right and it looks like a good place to end our video might be where the music ends before a new clip starts which is right there so then I can come in and either make it smaller like that that's one way to do it or I can select both of these and hit K for knife and that cuts it K for knife knife and cuts it and then I can move that so I have this now oh, there's even me coughing in there Isn't that interesting? so if I don't want that coughing I can hear look at that <laughs> All right, so I can zoom in on this, and let me scrunch this down. You can see it. I think I'm gonna edit that out by clicking not the video there, but just the audio. So I could click both. I'm gonna click just the audio and hit the K for knife, and go past the coughing, and then hit K, and then that cough I'm gonna delete and take out. Now, will anybody notice? No, probably not, because it's just the audio. Let's see. That worked out pretty well. And then I'll shorten the video to match the audio there. It's a lot of flexibility that you have doing this. Now, what would happen if I took that ball that we had as a UFO and put it over this video? Oh, and look at this, by the way. The audio doesn't start for a few seconds, and there's like a, there's a moment of freezing. I want to get rid of that. So I'm going to click on this and shift-click on this, and I'm going to shorten... Oh, well, let me shorten it that way. Oh, no, okay. Interesting. And I'm going to cut that out then. I'm going to take both of these and I'm going to move my cursor to just before the audio starts and hit K for knife and then delete that and delete that. Now I'm going to take both of these and that shift click all that and bring it in so that I go from here and then it starts right there. But if I wanted to, I could move this whole thing over and drop it down. Well, I can't drop both of them down. I have to drop this part down. There we go. And then slide it into place. All right. And if I, and now I need to close that gap. So there we go. Okay. That comes in. And I can take my ball model and I can hit Control C and then control V and duplicate it. And now, of course, my, my ball can be right over the video, as much or as little as I want, right? So there's my ball coming in like a UFO. There we go. And of course, you can do the same with the cube. The cube can come in here, and the cube can rise up and I have that capability once again of moving the cube, its position, wherever I want to. Okay. And then, there you go. Maybe I want to put the ball in where the audio starts a different song. So a lot of possibilities here. Even that text that we had, I can copy that and paste that. And then I have 
the text, but of course it's the wrong text. This is the Solar Cities floating IBC tank holder. This is not, but because I made a copy of it, I can come over here into this strip and give it a new name and say um, Rosebud Continuum Solar Panels. And I should also change the legend for it. So, because otherwise it says 0 0.001 of the solar cities floating. I just say Rosebud Solar. I can make it that, but the actual text says Rosebud Continuum Solar Panels. And I can change the color as well. So I've got two discrete, two discrete, um, I think the color of this, get it a little bit lighter and change the box margin. And let me see if I can change the opacity of it. Maybe not. Get the color there. Yeah, the shadow there doesn't doesn't seem to let me change. I guess it should give me the opacity. Yeah, that opacity should be under. No, uh, no. Why aren't you letting me change the opacity of the box? You should let me do it, but it don't let me do it. Get rid of the box. Add the box. Well, there's supposed to be a way to change the uh, the opacity there, and that's something else we'll have to figure out. Okay, but anyways, you can see I have now that asset, and those assets should show up under. Let's see where the assets are. Camera. No, they don't all show up. I'm not exactly sure where you can see all the assets that are in here yet. The different strips that are in there. Editor, dope sheet, timeline, graph editor, shader, properties. Well, it didn't let me see what all is in there. So we'll work on that a little later to figure out how we can see a list of all these things that are there. But they are there in each of these strips, and it lets you put in all of these different elements. The other thing is, of course, you can add a sound. So when you hit add sound, you'll have to have a sound somewhere. In my music folder, do I have a sound? Cha-cha slide. Um, let's see if the cha-cha slide will come in. There it is. So that's a sound. <clears throat> I don't know where to put it yet. I'd like to, I usually like to put my sounds underneath. So maybe I can add a Add a layer, add an effect strip, maybe not, marker, strip, transform, select. In some programs you can insert a new, a new layer, and I don't see a way to insert a new layer. So let me just take this out for now. I'm going to move everything up. Until I figured out how to add a new layer, I'm going to lift everything up a layer so I can have another sound layer down here in track one. Now I'm going to go back and add my sound and put the cha-cha slide in there. I certainly don't need the whole cha-cha slide because I'm not making a movie that long, so I'm going to pull it back to here. And you can see now, now I got music. On my movie. And if you're wondering about where the music is, you have to hit display waveform and there it shows up. So it's pretty cool music for that. And you can work on timings. I'm unpleased that at the beginning of this you can see me hitting the play button there. So I'm going to pull this video in a little bit. Oops, that's not going to help me. I want to cut that out. So I'm going to come over here and now I'm going to hit the K for knife and get rid of that. And actually, because it's just music, I'm going to move this music. Move the whole music track over.
and I don't want this music here, so I'm going to hit the knife K for knife and cut that because I don't need that music. So I take that piece out. Hit delete. All right. So, and of course, what I also don't like is that the turtle image doesn't fit the whole screen. So I'm going to click on the turtle image, which is that one there, and I'm going to go to scale, and I'm going to scale it in X so that it fits the whole screen. All right, there we go. So here's a little stupid video that doesn't make any sense at all, except if I say this, if I go, oh, I'm going to show this anyway. I could put a text in by adding text the way we did before, but I want to show you something else. You can go in and make a text scene. And to do that, I'm going to create a new scene over here. And I'm going to call this, of course, text scene. So I know I created this as a scene. And I'm going to go to layout. And I need to get my camera to be the same camera. OK, so let me go back into the ball model, for example. Select my camera. Right, there's, there's my camera there. Select it. That's the frame of the camera. There's the camera. Doesn't matter either way you select it. Control C to copy it. Go back to now my text scene and paste the camera in and we'll see what the camera's looking at. All right, now that I'm using the same camera, I can come in and go add text. And it appears flat on the screen, so I need to rotate my text in the red line, which is the X axis. So I go R, X, and then 90, and it stands up straight. Now I want to rotate R, Z, and rotate it so that it's looking kind of the way I want it to. G to move it toward the middle or anywhere I want to float it. And now I do some interesting things with text if it's a model rather than their text generator in the video editor. Because whether I color it or not, not the issue, when I come into the text um, properties, I can come into it and I can change its geometry by extruding it, right? So that makes this 3D text look. And that's by extruding the text. All right, whoa. So, so I can do that, and I can offset the text a little bit. So I can mess with the fonts a little bit with the offset. I can pick a font for it, by the way. And that texture space, no, where's that? Which text is it? There is a, a font thing somewhere here. And I'm just not, there it's font. So I go to font, and then you can say, well, I want it, it's using block regular. If you have fonts installed, then you should be able to use them. So Windows fonts are all available to you. So I can go down and, uh, I, I like comic. Let me see if I can find my comic one. There it is. Comic Sans or Comic Bold Italic. I'll use this Comic Sans. So I put that one in for regular, and I got that cool comic font. That's neat. Let's see what the camera's going to see. I can scale this up if I want. I can rotate it uh, backwards in Y a little bit. Bring it across like that. Let's make it a little bit more sort of bold like that. And now change it and say the name of it is no longer text. The name of it is going to be oops, it's going to be my comic font, comic text. And what is it saying? I have to give that comic, I have to write in some kind of name for it. Now to do that, here you want to be in edit mode. So I tab into edit mode and then I go and say, um, editing with Blender. And then go back to tab to turn it into an object. Of course, it's way too big, so I can scale it down and have it do that. And you can have all sorts of fun with this. Let um, me rotate it just a little bit back in the Z axis. Let's do that. Now what I can do with this for an animation is I can, in my first frame, I can scale it way, way down and move it to the center and hit 
I for location, rotation, scale, make a keyframe. And then I can come in and over that first 60 seconds or, or 60 frames or two seconds, I can have it scale up and move it over. And I can hit the keyframe. So now it'll go editing with Blender, which is cool. Wouldn't it be cool if it could also spin as it did that? So I think what I'll do here is I'll come back and I'll hit R for rotate. Oh, and it's also rotating on that little dot there. So that could be a little awkward. I don't want it to do that. I want it to spin from the middle. So let me put my cursor right in the middle of it. Can I do that? It's going to let me. It's not letting me put it in the middle. Because I want to go to object and then I want to say that the set origin to geometry. There it goes. It goes right in the middle of the geometry. So now when I rotate, it's going to rotate like that. And here I think it should also, yeah, the dot of the geometry is in the middle. So I've got to um, redo my keyframe. So it goes like that, but I also want to spin it. So I'm going to come back into that keyframe and I'm going to rotate it. And where's my rotation? Here it is. Spacing, object, font. Doesn't give me rotate. There's a there's rotation. Taper rules, geometry, object, bevel. Oh, I can bevel it. That's kind of cool. So there's a little bit of beveling in there. Fill caps, don't fill caps. But I wanted to rotate it and I'm looking for where the, oh, here it is. Open this up. There it is. A rotation. If I do a rotation of 360 degrees, then I hit the rotation scale button. Avocado. It spins into being, which is a lot cooler, right? So, editing with Blender. So now I have that animation in that scene called the text scene. So if I go back to my video editor for my project, or the video editor, and I take this and go add scene, text scene, there's my text scene. I need to bring it up on top, of course. Right? Bring it in. Why is this not letting me? Okay, there we go. That's the zero mark. Actually, all this got moved for some reason. It's supposed to be on zero. So it'll go like that. And now, of course, as we did earlier, we're going to have to select that and go to the transparent and the blend as an alpha over. And then we lost our colors, so I do have to go to the modifiers and add a color balance modifier. And I'll put my... Uh, 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 what's it doing? Ah, it's still not transparent. Why not? It should be. Let me go to refresh. There we go. Yeah, so, boom. So, but I see now that everything should be moved over. So I'm going to move all this stuff over a bit and make my turtle last longer. In fact, that length of that animation of two seconds, I need it to end and linger before everything else starts. So I'm going to click and drag and move all this stuff over and then make my turtle last longer for the transition. So it'll be like this. All right, and at that point I need it to go out. So I'm going to, two ways to do it. I think the, the quick way is to add a modif, not a modifier. It's to add a fade, so fade out. Let's see if that would do it. 
that it fades out. Cool. Otherwise, you could use the animation property, but the fade out works. And of course, I wish it had gone tat 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 and then faded out. So let's see where our track is. Tat 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 fade. Tat 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 fade, right? That's where it should go. It should be tat 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 fade, right on that line. So that's where I want my fade to occur. And that means I should move this back. And I need to re reapply the fade, I guess. And actually, the fade that we applied turned into an animation. Look over here. So what I can do is reset this keyframe to zero. And then the fade should happen in time. Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it? What's going on? I don't want a keyframe there. I want a keyframe there. Let's see. Oh, now it's all zero, so I need to add a keyframe here. And now it comes in and then it fades out, but it's fading out a little too early. So I need to put another keyframe. You see the fade line down here of how quickly it's fading. I need to go back up to one here and add a keyframe. And I got to get rid of whatever keyframes are in there. So how do I? How do I find those? Somewhere in there, there's a keyframe. So I'm going to go back to here. It's at one. Go to here. It's at zero. It says there's only two keyframes. So I need to definitely put in a keyframe here that is one. Like that? Is that going to do it? There we go. Now you can see up here the curve. It's all bright yellow saying I'm at one all the way through here and then here I drop out into the fade and then I need my fade here to be a little longer no no okay we're good that fades fine that fade is between there and there all right so let's see how this looks yep and it went out on that although there was some weird artifact I don't know where that came from okay so there's a bit of the video. We would love to fade in here. You can right click on here and go to fade in. The only problem is that this is too long. Let's try that. Nope. So why is our fade not working? Uh, because the tortoise, let me cut the tortoise. K for cut. It was starting before the actual video. Fade in. It fades in, but then this thing has to fade in too. Or I move it. If I do that, I'm going to mess with my. Oops. Let me get this to fade in. Fade in. Let's see what this does. Something like that. Okay. for whatever it's worth. Oh, we created a gap. So I need to get this stuff and move it back over to close the gap. That's better. Okay. Still okay down there. Yeah. The ball will go in and... Okay, so that is the basic idea for how you make a video using Blender's video editor. There should be a fade out at the end of this. Fade out. So that it does a fade out at the end. There we go. Although sometimes people like to make the audio last a little longer when they fade out. So I can grab the audio and see if it'll... Now the audio ends there. If I wanted to go a little longer, I would have to actually move the track over like that and move this over. Let's see that.
All right. And of course, you can add the end if you want to using the simple text generator and come here and say the end. Boom. And then and move that, slide that into place. Maybe right up to it so it comes in right then. Okay. That's it. That's um that's the way that you work with Blender for making videos. I'll do another one that is less sort of blunder through, but I'm famous for making these blunder through Blender videos where I just sit down and I encourage you to do the same and start experimenting and record what you're doing so that your time is not lost uh, because people can see the mistakes that you make and they can learn from you and uh, we know exactly how long it took to, uh, to make these uh, different uh, videos. All right? All right. Happy blendering.